I'm, I'm Cory Booker. You ever hear my name? My first introduction to Cory Booker was through the 2005 documentary, Street Fight. Cory Booker is a 32-year-old first-term city councilman running for mayor of Newark, New Jersey's largest city. I'm coming after you. He's hoping to unseat the longtime incumbent, Sharp James. So I can't believe you used to live in a house where you keep the door open, and now you're in a building where you're not even a... It's outrageous. You want a million on your door. Yeah. Well, that's our number one issue. And, and no disrespect to Sharp James, but he's had 16 years to show you what he could do. And, and, and anything he could have done, he should have done by now. It's time for some new young blood, okay? Thank you. God bless you. All right, bye-bye. I was very impressed with Booker as a man and as a political figure. I was also very disturbed by the high level of corruption in Newark under Mayor Sharp James, who had no problem using city officials and police officers to hamper Booker's campaign. I'm not going to let you walk the boat. Joe, this is ridiculous. Nothing we're doing here is illegal. My late I think you need to call the police. Let's continue that. They brought the big brass. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Let's go. Is this the kind of security they get every night here? <laughs> it's just so ironic, man. Here's a neighborhood that never gets police protection. But I show up and they get the top brass. From harassing business owners and shaking them down for campaign contributions, to removing and destroying pro-Booker signs, the Sharp James campaign pushed aside the law and common decency as much as they could. They even tried to intimidate the filmmaker documenting this race. Suddenly, I'm surrounded by four plainclothes policemen. You, you, had, you had to be authorized to come in here. I was authorized. I want to know who you spoke to. It's not a black guy. Are you a police officer? I sure am. Okay, well, we'll talk about it when we get outside. Now that Senator Booker has decided to jump into the crowded field of Democrats seeking to win the presidency, I decided to take a fresh look at Street Fight, which you can currently find on Amazon Prime. And I couldn't help but see it through the lens of the last few years. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. Like millions of other Americans, I'm disappointed that Donald Trump was allowed to turn the White House into a reality TV show. But liberals, progressives, and others commonly identified as the left have been too quick to assume that there is something fundamentally wrong with the other side, as if the right alone is made up of stupid people, and Democrats would never have fallen for someone like Trump the way so many Republicans did. Today is my wish to continue to give something back the city of Newark that took a poor boy living on Howard Street and South Farge Avenue in one room with a pot-bellied stove with an outhouse in the backyard, one pair of sneakers, one pair of pants, one t-shirt. And today the poor boy from Howard Street is your mayor and seeking re-election. At first glance, Sharp James may seem very different from Donald Trump, but his politics of self-aggrandizement are all too similar. They also share a disrespect of the rule of law and a love of lies and conspiracy theories. Corey's fundraising effort has managed to surpass Sharp's. Their filings with the government show that each side has raised between two and a half and three million dollars, which should be a huge boost for Corey. It shows that he's a real competitor. But Sharp has managed to turn this advantage into a disadvantage. Everywhere he goes, he's saying that Corey has raised $10 million, not three, and is trying to buy the election. $10 million can buy a lot of votes. <laughs> Why does Corey Booker, after four years in Newark, have $10 million? If money can buy an election, then it will. But what the people are saying in Newark, Newark, it's not, not for sale. sale. Booker King no, bought it. It's not for sale. Right. No, it's not for sale. Right. No, it's not for sale. Well, Sharp has this amazing ability to tell a lie so many times that people believe that this is the truth. 
If the mayor of the city is saying this, you sort of put some veracity in it. Even I began to wonder whether perhaps I was being spun by the Booker folks. So I confirmed by looking online. It's all public information on a government website. So we don't have $10 million? But it's not just a matter of how much money there is. It's also where it comes from. An anonymous flyer goes out, accusing Corey of conspiring with Jews to take over the city. Sharp tells reporters that Corey is propped up by white, right-wing investors. Because of the extreme group far white, right-wing Republican Party who was supporting him. His commercials and speeches and mailings all push the message hard. I'm a tool for the Republican Party. I, I confess it. I thought you were a tool of the Jews. I'm a tool of the Jews, the Republican Party of Afghanistan, the Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> I am a member of the KKK. I'm part of a CIA conspiracy. Oh, you want to know what the newest one is? You know what the newest one is? I'm there's gay. A, there's a media conspiracy to elect Cory Booker. I'm part of the media conspiracy. Democrats may like to imagine that everyone in their party would run from such behavior. But for the better part of two decades, a majority ran with it. And even prominent figures were willing to support Sharp James and accept his support in return. Jesse Jackson comes to town and calls Corey a wolf in sheep's clothing. Thank you. Sharp James is the real deal. Sharp James is the real deal. I believe it is important to point out these things because few people on the right or the left live on such a moral high ground that they have never been guilty of supporting a low-life political figure. And so long as we continue to think that our side is good and their side is evil or stupid, we are never going to make things any better. People in America are losing faith uh, that this nation will work for them. Uh, they're beginning to believe uh, that, that too many folks are, are gonna get left out or left behind. They're beginning to believe that the forces that are tearing us apart are stronger than the forces that bond us together as a people, as a country. I'm, I'm running for president because I want to address these issues. Is Senator Booker the right leader to pull us towards civility and unity? I don't know. Personally, I find his support of the Green New Deal to be a massive and needless expansion of government that only turns me off from wanting to support him or any other Democrat. Nevertheless, he's certainly worth listening to because our future is about more than just political positions and we cannot continue to embrace the politics of division and constant hostility without paying a price that will soon become too great to bear. The people I admire are the people that lead by calling out the best of who we are and not the worst. So I'm running for president because I believe in us. I believe in these values. I'm going to put them before the American people. Hey, and, and, and if that's not what they want, then, then I won't be the next president of the United States. But I know my country. I know the goodness and the decency across this land. I've experienced it. My family, I, I'm in New Jersey because of that decency of white families who would not let my parents be denied housing because of the color of their skin. That's the kind of patriotism. That's the kind of love my family's experienced. I know it exists in our country. I believe in it. I'm putting my faith in that message. Uh, that heart and that reality in America.